The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Clearview Cyclones. On today's show, we're building this power sculpted contemplation bench, not to be confused with a constipation bench. Hit it! This bench includes a lot of cool design elements and fun techniques that I think that will really add to your woodworking toolbox of tricks. All right, let me show you some of the details of the design. The wood I used is one of my personal favorites, curly maple. And as you can see, we've got a lot of curves going on here. Uh, the top is pretty straightforward with this wave pattern. The legs actually have curves in the vertical dimension as well as horizontal. So there's quite a bit going on there. And the legs are slightly angled at three degrees to give it a little bit more of a wider stance. Uh, we have a big open mortise and tenon joint here at the top and a taper in the legs. We start at 10 inches and go up to eight inches here at the top. Now, why would you want a bench like this? Well, there's a lot of things you can do with a sitting bench. I call it a contemplation bench because for me, it's a place to just sit and think, maybe ponder my next project, and it's actually very useful around the house. Let me give you some examples. Now regardless of how you decide to use it, a bench like this is gonna help you refine your design skills as well as give you some experience with one of the most fun techniques that I know of in woodworking, and that's power sculpting. So let's get into the details. I'm tracing the shape of an early prototype onto a sheet of quarter inch plywood, and that'll serve as my starting point. From there, I can use various drawing tools to modify the design to my liking. And here's the new version. I refined the curves and added a three degree slant to the legs. I also increased the width and added a taper. Time to make the templates. I redraw my shapes onto a few template blanks and then cut them out at the bandsaw. The curves are then finessed at the oscillating spindle sander. If you don't have one of these, there are a number of tools that you can use, such as a cabinet maker's rasp, a spoke shave, and a shop made flexible sanding strip. I'm using some nice figured maple for this project, and the bandsaw is perfect for cutting the rough parts to size. The top and legs are actually going to be made of three pieces of stock each, and all three pieces will come from the same board for the sake of grain continuity. The boards are then jointed on one face and one edge, and then sent through the thickness planer. Each board is then ripped to width at the table saw. To create the tenons on each leg, we're going to cut the outside pieces a little bit shorter than the middle piece. Because the legs are angled at 3 degrees, we'll set the saw 3 degrees off from 90. A stop lock makes sure that all pieces are cut to the same length. Now you can see how we end up with an angled shoulder and a large tenon. Now to create the open mortise in the seat, we simply cut the middle piece short using the same 3 degree bevel cut. Pieces are then glued back together to give us our leg and seat blanks. And now a test fit shows how the basic structure will go together. Using the template, I trace out the curves on each piece. To help guide my sculpting, I'm using a drill to make holes that will serve as depth gauges. As a completely optional step, I'm first using the bandsaw to cut away some of the excess stock. There are quite a few power carving options on the market today, but I'm going with the ArborTech Turboplane. Installed in an angle grinder, I can remove a lot of stock in a hurry. So first up is the primary curve in the legs. I use a light sweeping motion to work my way back to the guidelines on the sides. In the middle, the drilled holes let me know when I've reached the appropriate depth. Pretty cool, huh? Now, to smooth out the surface, I use a 7-inch polisher outfitted with a sanding disc. Other tools that can help in this process include a spoke shave, 
a rasp, and a flexible sanding strip. Now the taper is cut into the legs at the bandsaw and a plane is used to smooth out the edge. Now for the secondary curve. The goal here is to scoop out the material and then taper up into the middle of the leg. The back of the legs receive a slight relief which is done with a rasp. The seat is pretty straightforward compared to the legs and I use the same sculpting process I used before. Now I can add some roundovers to ease the edges. In areas where the router can't reach I use a small rasp to create the profile. To assemble the bench I'm using epoxy for the extended working time. A high density filler will make the epoxy thicker and stronger. With the joints taped off for easy cleanup I can add the epoxy to the joints and put the parts together. With a clamp holding everything together, I drive two screws into each side. The countersunk holes can then be capped off with tapered plugs, which I make out of some scrap walnut using tapered plug cutters. Once the glue is dry, I can remove the excess tenon stock. The angle grinder removes the bulk, and then I use a die grinder with a ball mill to finesse the final shape. While I'm at it, I can use the ball mill to flush the plugs too. The rest of the work is done with a rasp and sandpaper. At this point, the entire project can be sanded through to 220 grit. To bring out the depth of the figured grain, I'm starting with a coat of Danish oil. I apply it liberally to the entire project and then wipe off the excess with a clean rag. After giving the Danish oil about a week to cure, I then add a few coats of gloss wiping varnish with light sanding between each coat. I then finish up with a final coat of semi-gloss and call it done. Well, I hope you decide to build yourself a contemplation bench. With a structure like this, it's basically three pieces of wood put together. There's a lot of different ways you can go. So if you build one or something like it, make sure you send me a picture so I can share it with the community. I love seeing what you guys are up to. All right, and I should also mention that this project is from the Wood Whisperer Guild. So if you want all of the details from top to bottom, we've got about seven videos focused just on this project alone. Nothing's left out. All right, you can go to thewoodwhispererguild.com to get that information. All right, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll catch you next time.